Hey guys, Adam Rose, Vice President and Senior Loan Officer of Western Ohio Mortgage here in Sydney, Ohio. And this is another episode of the Mortgage Guy Podcast. And today we're going to talk about OFA. What is it? People like to use it. People have been inquiring about it. There's a lot of little different options to it and some nuances. It considered an attachment to your current mortgage or your prospective house or your prospective mortgage. OFA is the Ohio Housing Finance Agency, uh, headquartered down around the Cincinnati area. And what it is typically used for is for an option for down payment assistance. Down payment assistance, the last couple of years have been getting pretty popular. You could uh, kind of tell, I mean, it's, it's getting advertised everywhere, right? Not just OFA per se, but a lot of lenders coming out with their own down payment assistance programs because once that market kind of shrunk up a little bit in 22 and 23, they're trying to find ways to get more buyers into the market and help them out. So OFA has always been there, been there for a long time. Um, but uh, let's talk about the types of assistance that they have, uh, some of the little nuances to it, how they're a little bit different on requirements and, and what, they, what they need to get their, um, their approval. So again, OFA is Ohio Housing Finance Agency, types of assistance. So they're going to do two styles of down payment assistance, right? Now this down payment assistance can be used not just for the down payment. So let's say you have enough saved, but you need a little bit in closing costs or something like that. It can be applied for that, okay? So it comes in the form of a silent second. All right, put that in quotes, silent second, because this is a forgivable grant from OFA, all right? You are not required to pay it back. Now they have some stuff with that, meaning if you, there, there's technically a reimbursement or a recapture. Should you sell the home in the first nine years, there's a percentage of that second mortgage or that silent second that could be paid back in the form of a tax. Now, they had opened up a, a reimbursement on the recapture uh, program back in like 06, and they, they simply state very few, if any, buyers have ever got gotten hit with this recapture tax since they've opened up their reimbursement program. Uh, but I would advise, hey, if you have any plans on selling this home in 12 to 18 months, just don't do the program, right? We would suggest that you hang on to it for four or five years at least uh, to ensure that you get outside that recapture tax should you sell the property prior uh, to the nine-year mark, but uh, just to, to to avoid the recapture. So just an FYI there, uh, it has a little, little, um, little caveat to it. Um, but let's talk about the types of assistance then. So again, we can use it for down payment. We can use it for closing costs. They have two different ones in regards to the amounts. There's a two and a half percent assistance and a five percent assistance. Okay. Now, usually when I'm talking to borrowers, there is a one percent origination charge attached to these uh, when we're doing the disclosures. So, really, your net benefit to you is one and a half percent, four percent when you're doing these OFA loans through us. Okay. So, heads up there. Um, but it might be a great option for you should you come a little short on your down payment requirements or your cash to close. So with these different types of assistance uh, or amounts, they're going to be attached a different rate, which we're not going to talk about rate, okay? Um, but they're, it's, it's attractive. It's a very good, good rate. It's very competitive for the market. Uh, it's not some crazy amount or anything like that. But obviously, the 2.5% assistance is, is going to have a little bit more attractive interest rate than the 5%, okay? Um, but the three different types that they kind of focus on, they have different tiers, of uh, interest rates attached to them is the straight assistance, okay? You have Ohio Heroes program, okay? Which is probably the most attractive uh, rate through all the assistance programs. And then they have the Grants for Grads where we're documenting your diploma in the last uh, certain, last couple of years, um, you know, four-year program or, or what have you. Uh, but those are the three different styles that, that um, you can apply for. Now, again, you don't have to be a Grant for Grad. You don't, or you don't have to be a graduate. You don't have to be a firefighter, a police officer, a teacher, a nurse, or anything like that to apply, uh, you can get the straight assistance. It's still there. It's still available. The rate's just a slightly different, okay? This, this is a bond program, so they put those little specialities in there. Um, so those are the types of assistance that you can get, okay? So qualifying. Let's talk about that. So we go and apply for this assistance. They have some a little bit different guidelines, Okay. So the first thing is the additional documentation, which you guys have watched these videos before, and you're probably aware of what kind of docs that we need to collect. Specifically, you always remember the two years of taxes or W-2s, right? So with OFA programs, 
we have to get a three years or three year history of your taxes and W-2s for them, not two. So that's an extra layer of, um, of qualifying um, and documentation required. Credit scores, let's talk about that. So they do all four programs, all conforming, right? So they do FHA, USDA, VA, and conventional. FHA financing requires a bare minimum score of 650. The other three, VA, USDA, conventional, you can go down to a 640. Now, why is this key here? Certain programs, all right, when we run them, they have to be an approved eligible to apply for OFA financing. If you've watched prior videos, we talk about manual underwriting and how we do that. That's how we were brought up. And it might be uh, you know, a lower credit score bar or what have you. And there's different nuances of the file that can make it either an approved eligible or a manual underwrite. In OFA's eyes, it has to be an approved eligible, okay? So why I say this is important is because with USDA, if let's say you need a down payment assist, or I'm sorry, closing cost assistance, and that's what we're getting OFA, I can darn near guarantee you, unless you have a lot of money saved, you are not gonna have an approved eligible at a 640 score. Their kind of baseline is 680, and even then it's questionable, right? We gotta have some reserves. So it may or may not apply to you for USDA financing, okay? So it's not just you got this score, you're good. You have to have an approved eligible in your findings, okay? Um, so we got that covered. I mean, there's some additional costs involved. Like I mentioned, when we're doing OFA down payment assistance, we attach a 1% origination charge against that file. So that's what brings down your net a little bit. Um, but there's also home buyer education classes. So on home buyer education class, you're gonna go directly through OFA, we'll send you a link uh, you're going to do this online class. They're going to call you and get you your certificate and then kind of like discuss the class and, and making sure you're the one that took it. Um, so that's a little piece of it. it. takes a little bit of time, but that's also in your disclosures and, and it's set up as a $75 fee to the consumer. Um, there are some income limitations as well. So let's talk about that. So we all know if you've, again, if you've watched these videos, we talk about USDA financing a lot. USDA Actually, their income guidelines are more strict than what OFA with the down payment assistance and the grants are. Um, so again, USDA household of four people or less, it's 110 grand. Household of five people or more, it's like 147. But the key here with USDA is it's the household income, right? So even if you're, if you're married and you your spouse is not on the loan, USDA, I am required to document their income and make sure you're still under their income limits. With OFA, all right, which again, if you do USD with OFA, we have to go with whichever is more strict on the income. Okay, so heads up. But uh, if you're doing FHA, VA, or, or conventional, let's just let's just go that route for right now. Because FHA is probably the most commonly uh, used program mixed with OFA, in my opinion. But a household of one or two people, you can go to 111, and a household of three or more people, 130. Now, here's the key. They, you have to be under the income limits for anyone that is on the note, okay? In a nutshell, we have a married couple. Only one is on the loan. The other one is not. With USDA, I have to document both incomes. With OFA, I only have to document his for the household income, okay? So they may be combined $120,000, which at USDA, you're out. With OFA or doing FHA, with OFA and down payment assistance, he may only have, I don't know, $70,000 of income, okay? He's under the limit. So that is key. It's only the income that's on the note or the repayment instrument, okay? So, uh, and then two other little things that go along with OFA is acreage, okay? So they're, they're kind of living in old USDA territory. So I remember about 10 years ago, uh, USC was really strict on large acreage, make sure it's not income producing, and you couldn't split the parcel, right? Because they're concerned about any kind of income producing um, properties. So we just ran into it actually, and uh, I completely forgot about the guideline. We had a property, I think it was like 6.2 acres or some weird stuff, and they were gonna make an exception for it, but the problem is, is that we did confirm with the county that this land could be split in half, par in half, parceled off, and that other parcel could be sold. OFA is still following that guideline. 
Okay. USDA used to do it too. Dealt with it all the time, but haven't seen it in years. And they kind of kind of got they loosened up a little bit on it. But OFA is still stuck with it. So heads up, if you're buying a home with OFA with more than five acres, you could potentially have a problem. All right. It's technically not eligible unless you can get an exception made. But if we can confirm through the county that that five acre parcel plus could be split in half and sold, you're definitely out. All right. So heads up there. Uh, that can catch you up as it did myself. Um, and then turn times, right? So when you're doing this financing, we are going to take you from start to finish, just like any other loan program. But once we're done with the file and you're practically clear to close on our end, you have to get uploaded to OFA, all right, for them to review. Well, currently the turn times are about, I don't know, eight, nine days, business days. They're taking a little while, okay? There's been an uptick in OFA applications, so they're just they're just getting behind. Uh, but you have to be prepared for that, right? If you're doing a 30-day contract on an OFA loan, you're probably not going to make it because that means that file is practically clear to close in 18, 19 days in order to make sure you get it to OFA in time and get it back for a clear to close. That can be a challenge. As we all know, uh, all loans are a little bit different, right? The two things that vary on every loan file is the person and the property. So you never quite know what you might run into. So you want to give yourself a little bit more time on those OFA contracts just to make sure it gets back in time and you can follow the contract guidance on your closing dates. Those are the main things for OFA, guys. There's a lot more to it, but I wanted to give you a broad brush stroke on how it operates, some of the little different nuances. It can be a big benefit uh, to the buyer, and uh, you really just got to compare market rates versus the OFA rates and what it's looking like that day and make sure it makes sense for you. Okay, Like I mentioned earlier, if you're planning on being in the home for a very, very short term or short period of time, I, I don't really recommend the program. Um, but again, all to their own, right? You can make the decision. We'll give you the options. Uh, very good. So we'll see you all next week, guys. Remember, subscribe on YouTube. Check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we will catch you all next week.